You replay that day in your mind, and it never goes away. Something has happened. Something, I repeat, has happened in the motorcade. There has been an attempt on the life of President Kennedy. We heard Kennedy had been shot and was being brought to the emergency room at Parkland Hospital. You think, my goodness, I'm about to take care of the president. What happened in trauma room one never came out, never became public. I was there, I remember it in detail. It's etched in my memory forever. We got the EKG machine in, there was just a straight line. Straight line. Straight line. We thought that there was an entrance wound in the neck. The Parkland doctors were a serious problem for the U.S. government. And an exit wound in the back of the head. Because they provided evidence that there was a shooter somewhere in the front. In all probability, there was more than one shooter. Everything changed as soon as JFK's body left Parkland Hospital. When I saw the autopsy pictures, it made me very suspicious. Certain people in our government tampered with critical evidence to make sure the American people would not know the truth about who murdered the president. And that's about as bad as it gets. Someone told me you must never, ever say that that was an entrance wound again if you know what's good for you. The Parkland doctors are telling us the truth beyond any and all doubt. They have not deviated from what they observed 60 years ago. Will people feel that they have a better understanding of what actually happened? Absolutely. Hmm. All right. Uh, pretty good documentary. I think you watched. Uh, just to let everybody know, if you don't see a preview, that's because yeah, that's of copyright not, claim. That's and, never going to survive. It yeah. might not, but it's a trailer for God's sake. We're no, they don't home. care. No, they don't care. There's but an auto... you will see it on Rumble. You will see it on uh, Locals. Uh, uh, so I'm just letting everybody know who's watching this later on YouTube. If it goes right to me talking and saying something, you're like, what is he talking about? That's what, what it what, is. What is Hanley talking about? It's a preview for what the doctor saw, a Paramount documentary about the JFK assassination that I think you said you just watched. Yeah, I watched it last night, and um, there's a couple of news and notes out of the thing. Uh, one is that, that I don't even know where to start. There's a lot of information in there, but um, let me just start at the beginning. That footage of them on those couches, you know, in the, in the, in the preview there. Um, that's from 13 years ago from a secret TV show that was never aired. The documentary is British. They do not reveal what that TV show was. I, I went through all the credits repeatedly at the end to, fi to find out uh, the copyright of that show. They do not reveal that show. That show was, they put up a Chiron in the, right before that saying, you're watching these guys and you're thinking it's contemporary, but it's not. Well, I it's, wondered how they were alive. I'm like, right? No, no, no. We were we, we were watching, going, God, they look great. I mean, we're doing the math here, going, that guy's got to be 86. <laughs> you know, every single guy's got to be 86. We couldn't get around it, and it turns out that it's 13 years ago that it was suppressed for reasons I have no idea. It turns out this is made by the British. Uh, Paramount is picking it up as a negative option, or 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 whatever, put money into it. <laughs> um, so right away, my uh, hackles go up as to what's going on here. That being said, um, there's a lot of information. All of a sudden, you know, 60 years later, they're coming out with this. Keep in mind, this is after decades and decades of them destroying Dr. Carl Crenshaw, Charles Crenshaw, who we did an episode on. There's no mention of Charles Crenshaw. There's no mention of, of the lawsuit. There's no mention of Crenshaw uh, being attempted to be erased and destroyed by the Journal of American Medical Association and how he had to get these guys who were in this under oath in depositions, uh, especially Charles Baxter and some of the other doctors in there. I mean, uh, now they're claiming to be heroes 60 years later uh, because everybody's freaking dead. Uh, there's a, lo a long way to go from heroism. If you wanna to go to Dr. Charles Crenshaw, who came out with this book in 1992 and took the heat. So these guys, you know, 35 years later, can have a show on 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 uh, uh, Paramount, you know. I mean, it's a little much to to take in what they did to Crenshaw. Some of them worse than others, and some of these guys. I mean, McClellan was brutal. Baxter was brutal. 
Uh, obviously, they uh, uh, Kemp was one of them. There's a bunch of doctors there who are no longer alive that they show footage of. You know, Malcolm Perry, uh, who famously did the uh, uh, tracheotomy over the entrance wound. These guys believed um, that the wound to the throat, which I never heard before, the, the wound to the throat went out the back of the head, which meant that the shot would have had to come from the driver, <laughs> the driver of the limo for that oh, angle, to, that angle, which they don't get into. I'm just teasing that out. But they believe because they didn't know they didn't see the back wound uh, in the shoulder. They didn't see that. And they didn't see the temporal wound to the right temple, Eric. Uh, hmm. They did not see that. Apparently, it was under the hairline right here uh, hmm. and very small, like the throat wound. Th to their admission, they didn't see that. That being said, Michael Bodden is in there. Michael Bodden is a douchebag, hmm. oh. a gun for hire douche who contradicts everything every doctor at Parkland says. So they're just laughing when they show him the footage of Michael Bodden. Uh, the cop that you saw, the guy you saw there was uh, Robert Tannenbaum, the heavy set guy, uh, sounded like a New Yorker. He was uh, a captain of New York City Police. He was the original um, director of the House, the House Assassinations Committee. He was fired immediately and replaced by, uh, he, he was immediately fired and replaced so by. So he was good. <laughs> yeah, he was really good. And he was replaced by Blakey, uh, who was a mob done it guy. Uh, who they wanted to insert into that. Uh, that being said, they do trot out uh, Doug Horn again, uh, talking about his body switch theory, which I think is at this point preposterous. As I've said before, there's no need to switch bodies. Uh, there's a couple of guys who said this. I think they're lying. They were just orderlies. Uh, they wanted their moment of fame. I know that's hard to believe for people, uh, but this was kind of a big event. Nobody switched a body. Nobody took the body out of the bronze casket. Uh, they didn't need to do that. Uh, Horn, uh, Doug Horn uh, contends that there was a pre-autopsy head surgery, and then the autopsy began at 8 o'clock, completely unnecessary. Uh, Humes and Boswell controlled the autopsy from, moment, from the moment it started. There was no need for a secret autopsy. The autopsy itself was secret. You know, there was no need for two of them. You know what I mean? Right. What he what he did at eight o'clock was con reconstruct the head and body so it looked like uh, the theory that they wanted that a shot came from the back. Jesus, I guess like the typical release then. Um, no, it's really not. They, 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 no, no, there's good stuff. Yeah, there's no, no, no. There is good stuff in there. It is well made. They do start crying. Um, what can I say that's good about it? It, it is it is a watchable documentary. If you don't um, know a lot of this stuff, there's a lot of good stuff in there. I I think most of it is covered, which they're repeating in Destiny Betrayed by Jim DiEugenio and Oliver Stone, uh, which also came out last year. The four episode one on Prime is the one to get or the DVD things. As we now see, get DVDs. I know I sound like a boomer. But when they begin to take down Amanda Milius's stream on Amazon and you can't watch it on Prime and the DVDs uh, are the only way to go, people do not trust streaming services. That's why I want to eventually with Eric get all of our Kennedy stuff onto DVDs, not as a, a backslap, but to protect it and to sell it to people so they can have it in their own homes. This stuff could be gone in a second. We got locals, we got Rumble, but nevertheless, Look what happened to Amanda Milius this week with her uh, plot against the president uh, situation. They took it down. They they stopped selling it. And uh, and then they went after the film company and took down all of their product uh, that has nothing to do with Amanda Milius. The company itself had all their product removed from Amazon. Uh, they play hardball, folks. They are cleaning out and cleaning up the street leading up to the presidential election uh, in 2024. Yeah, there's also another advantage. It's not even a political advantage. I don't know if you remember Game of Thrones, that they had that scene with um, the W head on the pike along with all the oh, other heads. Yeah. Well, that got oh, stripped yes. too. So if you want to see the original version of movies or things like that, if you get the DVD from the jump, at least you will get that point in time what was released 
ask George Lucas, who likes to change up different things, or they sometimes even the directors get a little bit crazy and they they well, make they, little they, changes. Later Eric, on. They, they've stripped out smoking from movies from the 1940s and 50s. There you they've go. deleted that. I mean, you yeah. got to get these original DVD folks. I mean, you can't trust these people. They're going back into old films. They've taken plenty of stuff out of Animal House, National Lampoon's Animal House, uh, to my chagrin. Uh, there's they stripped out the pot scene with, uh, you know, um, they're stripping out all kinds of language. They're going back and removing words they don't want to hear in movies, Eric. And you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. And that's that's kind of what I'm saying. So it's take just a look at the French. Try to find an original version of the French Connection, folks. Good luck with Gene Hackman. Uh, mm -hmm. Try to find that out, uh, uh, DVD because that and all of these are keepsakes of American pop culture, which is what we do here. So, I mean, it, it gets under my skin that they're they're going back in time. Uh, of course, they're Orwellian in present time, but they're now feeling the, the muscle to go back in time and alter pop culture. So your kids will never have known what it was like back in the old days, artistically or pop culture wise. Same thing with books. Same exact thing happens. With Dr. Books. Dr. Seuss. Mm -hmm. But I'm the mm -hmm. Dr. Seuss and uh, Huck Finn. Huck Finn. You got to get the hard copies, folks. That's why, you know, the first edition I said of uh, uh, Reverend Ralph Abernathy's. Uh, I biography. found it, though. Got it on yeah. locals. Yeah. Ralph Abernathy's uh, biography, the first edition, goes into Martin Luther King's sex life uh, because he was there. And the second edition, it's gone uh, because they didn't want you to see what Ralph Abernathy. Uh, wanted to tell you uh, about his friend. Uh, you know, just a little minor thing, but nevertheless, if you can find the first edition of uh, Ralph Abernathy's autobiography, you, you will get a firsthand account of Martin Luther King's uh, sex life. Right on schedule. I, we're demonetized, by the way. What did I say? Martin Luther King or sex life? I don't know. It's just something happened in the first 12 minutes. We'll figure it out. All right. Whatever. <laughs> I think it's just okay. like we go live, so they go yellow. Yeah. I, <laughs> Look, I just wanted to add a couple of things to the Robert Webster episode that we did last Tuesday. I, I'm uh, spaced yeah, yeah, yeah. out now. The name of the project I found out finally. Yeah, this is the uh, article Yank at our Moscow fair. His superpower was fiberglass. Nobody had fiberglass, Eric. I thought it was, it is a type of plastic, obviously. Oh, okay. Right, but the key was fiberglass. And this led to the kitchen debate. The reason this is important is that kitchen that was designed by Rand was the same kitchen that Nixon went after Khrushchev in during the famous kitchen debate. That's at that the fair that he defects. In other words, they built, remember they, they had a, a kitchen that he debates Khrushchev in saying mm -hmm. our kitchens are better than your kitchens. If people want to look back on YouTube, you can find Nixon debating Khrushchev in in, in real time uh, in 1959, and this involved the Rand Corp uh, Development Corporation, also involved um, uh, Robert Webster, and it also involved fiberglass, and also involved having a kitchen with a refrigerator and a stove, and all that stuff. Uh, unlike what what's your name here, uh, Kamala Harris was standing in front of a stove for Thanksgiving, <laughs> which has become a huge embarrassment to the Biden administration. Was because it a gas stove? It was a gas stove, yeah. And I, no, no, that was that's, that's why it's gone viral. She's standing in front of her own, Eric, her own, God forbid, gas stove. So, AOC has one, too. I mean, nobody hates gas stoves more than the Biden administration. I mean, gas stoves, obviously, everybody knows how evil they are. And, you know. Oh, yes, yes. And they want to ban them from Anyway, Russia. so the, the thing with Webster was called... Um, the, the phony defective program, I found out the name of it is called Project Longstride. Uh, for those at home who want to Google that or not, I don't know if there's anything there, but uh, his code name was Guy223, his uh, Webster's code name uh, in the documents when he was debriefed. And some of them I sent you, but they were a little small. But uh, <laughs> interestingly enough, there was a Guy302 uh, besides Guy223, which was Robert Webster. There was a guy 302, and you'll never guess who it was. Mm, it was it Ryan was, Swift. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll tell you straight up, you're never gonna get it. It was Priscilla McMillan. Ah. 
the deep state author who did the uh, book Marina and Me and uh, is featured in Max Good's documentary. Hello, Max. Guy 302 was the code, secret code uh, uh, for Priscilla McMillan, if Max Good is watching at home, the great director of the movie uh, about Mrs. Uh, uh, Payne, Mrs. Ruth Payne. I recommend the documentary. And I don't know what happened with Ruth Payne in Dallas and her show. I, we didn't hear back from anyone who saw it, did we? Or uh, we have we have not heard back from that. No, she was Priscilla Johnson at the time. It looks like Priscilla Johnson McMillan. Yeah, with a hyphen yeah. there at some point. Yeah, she's uh, Guy Three Hundred Two. I don't know what that says. Is that what it says there? Or uh, this is just the documents. I, I found the article trying to find the other stuff, and this I think is the release about her. <laughs> information yeah. okay so she's a spook and she gets outed by max very the, well he very well, well played by max good in the documentary about ruth Payne, which i highly recommend you look at our episode with max uh the interview we did and that'll lead you into the um into the documentary which we don't have but you can get it get it on amazon and uh well worth get, it well worth it and get a dvd once again i'm sure that'll disappear so you know the the yeah, the new. these were the Webster thing was a dangle. Both of them were dangles. When I say dangles, they put Webster and 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 Oswald behind enemy lines to see the moves of the Soviets, and the moves are according different moves. But in the Oswald uh, uh, scripted audio drama, if you uh, will have been watching that, I don't know how many of you have been watching it on locals. Uh, I do address Robert Webster in the first episode. That's why I think Webster was on my mind when I we did the episode a week or two ago, uh, because he's in episode one. Sure. And uh, that, we're getting a lot of great feedback on that. More pages are coming out over the weekend to hopefully close out part one. And then we're getting to part two. There's some new technology coming out that it's pretty exciting. And okay. uh, we're going to keep this thing rolling. But we've gotten really really good feedback uh from people they're really captivated and i'm stoked you know it's funny i heard from an associate that in two seven 2017 uh the compa conference was in houston the uh, citizens against political assassination hmm. was in houston that year and this guy told the conference that he approached nbc to do a special on the kennedy assassination and uh, out the deep staters and the NBC told them we stand by the Warren Commission report. NBC told him that in 2017, and um, which is odd, but that you know that's what they're doing. That's their political stance. He wanted to do a, J a JFK special on the assassination. Sure. And uh, the man's name was Alec Baldwin. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. 2017. It Somebody just told me that. I'll give him some cred then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, I don't know what's going on with uh, with Meathead, uh, Rob Reiner. This is going to be – it's a bait and switch. He's doing an old tribute thing where you say the, the assassin will be named by me at the end when you watch all 5,000 fucking episodes and you'll lose your mind. And then he says the killer is Mel Torme, the Velvet Fog, or the, <laughs> the Deep State or some other bullshit. You know what I mean? He'll spin it at the very end. But it's an old tease method. Uh, which is really shameless to do this. You know, when you say, if you watch every episode, you'll find out who the assassin is, which which is like a bait and switch, Eric. Yeah, or I could see him saying, um, so it could have been hit, such and such who we discussed, or such and such who we discussed, or such and such. Right, whatever it is, you're not going to be happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever it is, I got a feeling you're not going to be happy by the end of the uh, Rob Reiner. Uh, uh, Gray Wolf's probably right. <laughs> Yeah, he'll he'll weave it into Trump that Trump was involved and and the right wing his father oh. did it or something or or communists and and Russia and oh, that's a, that's been going out now yeah or or yeah you don't want to blame Castro because he's an ally but uh, anyways I just wanted to address the Robert Webster thing and put a button on it Webster is featured in part one which is um, as I said as you see in the episode part one if you want to join locals and and watch it and listen to it. Um, it covers Oswald's marine training. It covers his defection. It covers uh, some flashbacks to his childhood uh, uh, dealing with David Ferry. It covers his re-defection back to the United States and uh, a couple of other things in, in part one to set the stage for part two, uh, which Eric will obviously finish very shortly. 
as soon as possible. <laughs> Gotta get part one out of the door. Okay. Anyway. Okay, so did we cover JFK? Uh, we did, and then we're gonna go into our Where fun little sidetrack. It's not it they didn't cover JFK, but it's the oh, JFK yes. guy. Yes. Let's yes. let's talk about this one because I oh my God. What a train this wreck. whole damn thing. You told me I listened to it. Uh, I don't think I've seen Bill Maher be a bigger douche in my no, life. No, no, Every you, statement dude, that dude. Stone made, it was like a you know an obnoxious smartass who always has something to say. For your class clown, like in oh, front yeah. of his professor. Yeah. I mean, and 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 Oliver was so patient with this guy. I, I mean, I was just stunned. Oliver is obviously on the same page with us about so many beats in the story of what's been going on the past couple of years. He reiterated so many things we've said on this show. He, you know, he's talking about the Fauci book and he's talking about RFK, who he's, he's apparently endorsed and given money to mm -hmm. RFK Jr., which is fine. No shock. I mean, that, no shock there. I mean, that's his world, obviously. And, but he, he, you know, at one point he says to him, you know, what do you make about the Ukraine uh, bio labs? And he goes, what bio labs? He goes, the ones in Ukraine. And he goes, I never heard anything about this. And he says, well, Victoria Newland said it in a congressional hearing. He goes, I, I never heard anything about it. And you begin to see that Bill Maher is in a bubble silo of no information. And he just goes on. He says, all I want to watch is CNN. I just need CNN to be normal so I can watch CNN. This guy has not opened a book since 1992. <laughs> he, everything he said was a lie. He said he read the Fauci book. And, I mean, oh, exactly. I, and then, yeah, then yeah. he's asking about AZT and, and Stone caught him because he said you yeah. read it. No, no, he said, no, no. There was four times he mm -hmm. caught him uh, lying about the book. Not that AZT one. This is the RFK book on Anthony Fauci. Sure. That Oliver obviously read. I've read. Everybody's read, but not Bill Maher. And uh, Bill Maher said he read it. He lied. He, he lies throughout this show while he's getting drunk, smoking weed with Oliver Stone uh, and just mocking laughter and giggling nonstop. I mean, obviously he, he smokes pot every day, but I, I assume after a while it doesn't have an effect on you. Um, and then he's drinking whatever. But the point of the matter is he exposes himself for the deep state shill that he is in this episode. Oliver says at the beginning of the show that he has had trouble being on live television. And he said, what do you mean? He says, well, I went on this show with uh, uh, Colbert, <laughs> and he's not even kidding, Oliver. He he does not even know it's Colbert. He just says, I went on this show a couple of years ago with this guy, Colbert, uh, after I did the Putin documentary series where I, I met Putin. And by the way, there is nothing he can say to Bill Maher about Putin that could get through. I, I mean, it was just astounding how, mm -hmm. how incredible brainwashed uh, uh, Bill Maher is about Putin and and he's in the Russia hoax and everything else. It's it, ill-informed. He's ill-informed, ill -informed, but also misinformed. Yes. Not just ill-informed, but misinformed. Anyway, Oliver went on Colbert and the, Colbert, who had him on because of the Putin documentary series, had never watched it. Hmm. And Bill Maher says, you know, it's really disrespectful, but it turns out later in the episode that Bill Maher did not watch Oliver Stone's Ukraine documentary. Mm -hmm. So the guy, he's, he's, he's criticizing Colbert for not watching something that the guest is on promoting, and he did the same thing. At some late in the show, Oliver says, did you see my documentary on Ukraine? And he goes, yeah, of course. Lying again, lying. He never saw it. I mean, wow, this is the douche I know, and this is the Oliver I know. It, it, it was actually both. That was the Oliver Stone I know, and that was the Bill Maher I know. And one is a mega douche. The other one is more like a professor, uh, you know, who's patient with his, you know, wayward student uh, who would not listen to a thing he said. You know, uh, anyway, it's just a fascinating thing. But Oliver had gone on to Colbert, and the crowd was booing him and hissing him, and Colbert was revving them up to boo him. And he said, I, I thought I was in some snidely whiplash villainous movie or something. It was surreal. This was, And this is on CBS, you know, his late night show. Sure. And, and and this is Oliver Stone. I mean, for God's sakes, they can't even have respect for one of their own. This is not like he's a Donald Trump fan. This is a guy who's an old school liberal uh, who is starting to move over. If you watch the... Uh, value entertainment interview with Patrick Bet David, 
towards the uh, anti woke, but it's only that part. It's like political. He's he's a lot like Bobby Kennedy in that regard. You know where it's like, yeah, Bobby Kennedy was great on mandates and a couple, but it, all the policy positions just right back hard. Well, I was going to mention the involvement yeah. of LBJ in that interview, which is worth the price of admission. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuse me, I have a cold. But Oliver um, starts to move over towards the LBJ involvement more than the cover up, cover up in the uh, Patrick Ben Bet David interview. Oh, true. And actually, in this one, he did say he would never vote for Joe Biden ever. Oh, oh, he completely, completely hard on, hard on himself, on himself no. for voting for him. He mm. he said, "I thought he'd be an elderly gatekeeper. I was totally wrong. He's completely destroyed the country." He sounds just like us in every single beat. It sounds like he is uh, David Fry, you know, three years ago or four years ago. That's where Oliver is. And he has a lot of courage. And I and I, I hope that he moves over into our camp completely because he has a much bigger platform than we do. You know, and he's, he, his last documentary was a, about nuclear power. And, and uh, even that. That was well, a move. That was they, a big move. No, even that, they, they both back and forth, back and forth. And Bill Maher's like, yeah, but of course, it goes really wrong. And then, you know, Oliver points out, Chernobyl was highly exaggerated. Thank which, you. By the way, is Thank Michael you. Crichton's discovery way back in the early Me too. 90s. Me too. But uh, Bill Maher had no curiosity, which drove nothing, me nuts. Nothing, because he just nothing, nothing. wouldn't say, how do you mean? How was it exaggerated? What are you talking? He never nothing, asked anything. Nothing. He just Re- it's really weird. Really weird. I, I would think that it looks like he was a victim of an MK Ultra program. I mm. really believe that, half kiddingly, but I, I, I think something happened to this guy. Yeah, something I think happened it's to this TDS. guy. TDS. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's just, but but the TDS has tentacles that go out and mm-hmm. out and out. You know, when you don't know that the that the there were there were labs in Ukraine, bio labs. Oh, I know. God. How, I mean, you're in the media. This is his world. It's not like he's a stand-up comic, you know, like Adam Carolla or somebody who's not involved in this. He does a, basically a news show every Friday night. Mm-hmm. Yikes, man. That was, I, it was scary and shocking at the same time. I, I, I don't know. I mean, it just freaked me out. Bro. And he calls himself an expert. I mean, he oh, oh, repeatedly, to be, repeatedly. you know, oh, you know that he is on top of it. And, and Stone definitely, you know, kowtow to him like, hey, you're an expert. You study this. Da, da, right. Da. But how polite was Stone to him? Oh, excessively. Wow. wow. I mean, wow. and, and good on Stone. I mean, Stone came across very well. Even yeah. w- even when he was being mocked relentlessly, he's like, come on, man. Yeah. Oh, come on. Why, why are you? Why? Yeah. <laughs> he was even defending agents. <laughs> that was funny. That was kind of funny because yeah, Bill Maher was like, really? Agents? You're going to defend them? <laughs> he's like, agents well, I, I just want to put a shout out to this book by uh, Charles Crenshaw. And mm-hmm. uh, to the book fund people who uh, allowed me to buy all these books. Uh, Look at the forward. The forward is by, that's what I was going to get to. <laughs> the forward, that's what I was saying. There's a forward is by a guy named Oliver Stone. And uh, in here in Trauma Room 1, it talks about how they um, iced out uh, Charles Crenshaw because he refused to uh, be intimidated on the party line of the entrance wound and the back of the skull, talking about it publicly at the time. And, uh, uh, and through the book. So I highly recommend that book. Cool. And we've already got some love in here. Todd Gavin is a new member. Todd Gavin. We've got a super sticker from Firmus Paradox 1. And Dick Dickerson is saying, I can't wait to see if they go after Blazing They, they already did. They already did. It's, done. it's gone, bro. It's gone. I it's think gone. the only thing saving it was Richard Pryor Crow wrote it, but maybe not. He's replaced by Cleavon Little, who puts a gun to his head and says he's going to kill this N-word. That's all gone. Uh, there's a lot of stuff cut out of Blazing mm-hmm. Saddles. Um, uh, Cleavon Little replaced Pryor because of drug use by Richard Pryor, in case anyone doesn't know that. But I, I wanted to give a mention to this Eileen Getty uh, situation with the uh, Stop Oil movement, Eric, mm-hmm. uh, out of Beverly Hills, the ones that are gluing their, uh, their hands to paintings around the world. You mean this pretty and- thing? This is uh, Eileen Getty, who looks like a man who transitioned, but she's not. She's the great granddaughter of uh, J. Paul Getty. Uh, she's worth trillions. She has a, um, I think, a brother that I know, because I know Baldazar Getty uh, from Hollywood. Her, um, 
either brother or cousin. I'm not really sure the relationship between Baldazar, who was a very nice guy, uh, and this fanatical psychopath, the great granddaughter of J. Paul Getty. She is funding uh, a group called uh, Climate Awakens. This is who she's funding. And there's a woman named Margaret Klein Solomon out of Beverly Hills who is running this uh, nonprofit NGO uh, funded by this woman, uh, the Getty Group. This is Klein uh, Solomon, um, who is the hands-on uh, director of this Climate Awakens group uh, based in Beverly Hills, which was revealed today by Fox News, um, just to get back to the news part of the show. They have spent millions and millions of dollars training over 15,000 of these soup can people. And uh, these people uh, literally interrupted the St. Patrick's Day parade yesterday in white jumpsuits covered with blood. That's the Palestinian faction. The art faction is really. You mean the Macy's Day parade? <laughs> what did I say? St. Patrick's Day parade. <laughs> I swear that's what I heard. <laughs> oh, well, it's Thanksgiving Day parade. So, a funny side note on the Thanksgiving Day parade, if I could say it. When we were. Um, we were hanging out in New York, me and my friends who played poker in, in John Kish's house, which was on 77th and Central Park West. And I went to college with all those guys and we'd have a poker game the night before Thanksgiving. And the reason we had this poker game at his house, his parents had worked on the Manhattan Project. They had been German Jews. They had fled Nazi Germany after their grandfather, after their father was picked up by the brown shirts and thrown into the back of a truck and taken to Dachau. His parents, uh, uh, his his son fled to New York and he married a woman. They were both nuclear scientists. They helped uh, work on the Manhattan Project. They later died of a exposure to radiation. But the two sons uh, were friends of mine. One I went to college with, one was another friend of mine, uh, Tony and John Kish. So they had this incredible multi-million dollar apartment on Central Park West and 77th Street. And every year, the night before this parade, the, the Thanksgiving Day parade, we would have a poker game there. And out the windows on 77th Street by the museum, uh, the night before this parade, they would blow up uh, uh, Snoopy and all the balloons, Eric, on 77th Street. And as they would blow up, they would eventually rise up to the level of our window <laughs> where we were playing cards. And we would look out the window and there was Snoopy and all of these massive balloons looking at us <laughs> through the window as we were playing uh, poker. I just want to, I remember that last night watching the parade for the first time in years. That'd be great, uh, man. It was yeah. great. It, every, we did it every year. And then in the morning on 77th, they would come around the corner and begin going down Central Park West to Central Park South, down 6th Avenue to Macy's at 34th Street, which is what people watch finally on the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. But every year watching them blow up those balloons and have them rise up to the level, I think the apartment was on like the 11th or 10th floor or something, and they would rise up to the level of the apartment. It was just a beautiful, surreal thing to see every year, right by the uh, Museum of Natural History, by the way, if anybody's from New York. So anyway, I just wanted to get that out. But in that parade, uh, blood covered, phony blood covered Palestinian protesters in white jumpsuits uh, glued themselves to the street again, uh, having to be pried off by NYPD, uh, trying to uh, infiltrate and stop the Thanksgiving Day Macy's parade. That's, that's where this has gone with the Palestinian thing. The art thing, is uh, this woman who's bragging that she's trained over 15 to 30,000 art uh, uh, protesters in this, you know, destruction of famous art uh, mm -hmm. with soup cans or gluing themselves to art in museums uh, because they believe the world's going to end by the end of the week. If any religious person did this, they would be mocked ferociously and religiously. If any of um, religious people came out as end of the worlders, Eric, they would be mocked incessantly. And yet this is the same thing they're doing uh, with Greta Thunberg and some of these other people saying the end of the world is, you know, 10 minutes away. Uh, we have to go berserk and get rid of all, stop all oil. Uh, mm -hmm. J. J. Paul Getty, of course, famously uh, made his money in oil. Uh, Getty oil is still around uh, and supplying energy for the entire world despite this woman living in malibu and not giving a shit how she how we get energy or how the stove works in, she got uh, hers dude she yeah, got hers you're, yeah, you're, she's yeah. good no worries no worries and then uh you wanted to talk about this guy 
Yeah, this is one of the main funders of the operation. I was shocked to learn two things. One, the people funding this, other than Getty, are Hollywood producers, uh, famous actors and actresses. And this is Adam McKay. He's one of the biggest funders of the organization. And uh, McKay famously um, made Talladega Nights, if you recall. He made uh, the other guy, the big short. He made Vice with with um, um, the guy who played American Psycho, Christian Bale, uh, a, an incredibly bad movie about uh, uh, Dick Cheney, you know, really just on the nose. And he has become a tool of political propaganda films, specifically for HBO when they're not in the theater. He's making uh, films. Uh, the one about the election he did was really insidious. Uh, but it's weird because he made a film called Anchorman, uh, Ron Burgundy story uh, with uh, 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 an actor Will Ferrell. with Will Farrell. And a very uh, popular movie. A lot it's a great movie. movie. It's so great that I was one of the pallbearers to the dead dog's funeral in that movie. That <laughs> I just wanted to throw that in there. There's a scene in the movie where they fling the dog off the uh, bridge onto the 405. And then there's a later scene. Uh, with the funeral of that dog that's cut out of the movie. I don't know if it's in the DVD director's cut, but I was one of the pallbearers of that dog's casket. I don't even know how that happened, folks. I really don't. But uh, uh, I am the pallbearer of the dead dog, one of them, in uh, this movie by Doucheface Adam McKay, uh, Anchorman, uh, the Ron Burgundy story, which is a very funny movie, as is Talladega Nights which features also, uh, 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 what's his name? Sasha Baron Cohen is a French a French race car driver, which is great. Which I love that movie. That was great. Right. Yeah. Haven't heard from him on the uh, uh, Hamas-Israel squabble. He's an Orthodox Jew out of, out of England. I, some of these people disappear when things get contentious and come out when they're not. So I haven't heard a, a peep out of uh, uh, Sasha Baron Cohen yet. So I'm curious to hear what, what his take is, if one way or the other you know uh, well while we were playing um i was you know collecting things for the show or whatever this came across um, my twitter feed and it kind of felt like it was in line with what we we're talking about now the climate protests and also uh topics that we've been covering like communism and this guy here Back in 1992, uh, an older friend of my father, who was from St. Louis, asked me to go to this meeting that the Communist Party USA was having at the University of California, Berkeley. And he had studied communism and written books about communism back in the 60s and stuff. And he was curious because if you'll remember back in 1989, the Berlin Wall had come down. And everyone was saying communism is dead, it's over. Then in 91, in December, the Soviet Union dissolved. And so this is six months later, the summer of 92, and the Communist Party USA is having a meeting. So he asked me to go out to this meeting. He said, would you go out there and just see what they're talking about? Because we, we won. This thing's over. And so I went to that. And for three days, I sat there in breakout sessions and lectures and, and listened to these hardcore communists. And, and one thing shocking about it, too, I thought it'd be college radicals since it was at Berkeley. So I dress like a college radical with some <laughs> radical t-shirt on. So I walk into the auditorium. There's 14 or 1,500 50, 60, and 70-year-olds with briefcases. And I thought, whoa, this is actually serious. It's not just some radicals. And many of those exact people, as I researched them later, ended up being in Obama's cabinet in 2008. And that's what motivated me to make the movie because I realized, well, these are the people that were at this communist meeting with me back, back in 1992. But at that meeting, they laid out this plan, how they wanted to take America down from the inside. They were going yeah. to focus all their energies on that now. They'd been focusing on it for a while, but they realized they could never outspend America because capitalism and free enterprise is so successful. And they kind of, that woke them up. Okay, we got to go to plan B. They, they just keep building more and more. And of course, we had all the years of Reagan where he'd really built the military up. So they realized we we're in trouble here. Um, and so that's what they talked about. They mean how they were going to do that from the inside. And I didn't think that much about it. Went on with my life. But then again, 16 years later, 2008 from 92, when I remembered what they had talked about, like one thing uh, that is so clear how it had changed. They had said back in 92, we're going to use the environmental movement to take down the free enterprise system in America. And in 92, that didn't make sense because... That's wow. the basic point. It goes on, but I thought that was really on point. Who is that guy? 
I'm I'm not sure. I bookmarked it. I want to track out because he said his movie. I, I now want to see his movie and see what he's about. But that is right in line. Look, Soviet Union. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, right I've been saying here. this. I've been saying this for years, man. They, as soon as the Soviet Union collapsed, they came here and London, but here, uh, and they wormed their way into the Democratic Party, ostensibly through the Obama administration. A um, couple other things, you know, NGOs, think tanks, um, you know, a bunch of other things. Um, but that's where they went. They didn't go to Miami and get into a, a condominium, uh, a gated community. These are political ideologues who just because the Soviet Union collapsed, they didn't change their ideology. They just said, we need a better host. We're parasites. And we parasitically have to move from the next, uh, the dead carcass to the next living carcass after we've sucked the life out of this carcass. And um, they're here, folks. They're here and uh, they may have uh, gotten so far in that we can't save the body. You know, I, I love what he said, or it was very significant when he said, that everybody came in, came in with briefcases and suits yeah. and were in their 50s through 70s and 92. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. You know, this was not college too. It's like, literally, okay, the real communists moved in. Yeah, those were, the, those were the Soviet Politburo people. And, and, you know, a lot of them went wherever they could get into, but a lot of them came here uh, having lost the war. A lot of people come here when the war is over. You know, ask the Vietnamese in 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 uh, uh, in California how they got here. You know. Yeah. Anyway, I just thought that that was a good um, button to put on the you know the climate activists. Everything it just ties right in one, two, three, four. Mind control and. Uh, well, I just thought it's going to be speaking of the Soviet Union. I just thought it's going to be very interesting when RFK Jr. becomes president, and. Um, he has a meeting with other world leaders. In other words, I had this uh, fantasy after watching Oliver Stone and, and thinking that, you know, if RFK did become president, he would have to meet with Putin. And I'm sure he would. He'd look forward to meeting with Putin to discuss this situation. Now, Trump's going to meet with Putin, uh, and Biden will never meet with Putin, of course. But Trump will, of course, meet with Putin as he's met with every other world leader, and he'll straighten this thing out. But I said to some friends of mine the other night, I said, what happens when Putin would meet with RFK Jr. How would that go? Well, here's how it would go. And I'm going to, I'm going to tell you the scenario of how this would go. Putin's going to say that your son machine gunned my friends and countrymen to death as a soldier of fortune uh, in Ukraine. And RFK is going to say, what? And he's going to go, yeah. He says, you talked about it on numerous shows, how proud you were of your son going over illegally as a war criminal, which is what it was, uh, for the Ukraine and machine gunning Russians to death. Now, Putin knows this. He's never going to forget this. So RFK's position internationally has always already been compromised by the stupidity of him and his son uh, involved in a failed war, machine gunning Russians uh, who are the countrymen of Vladimir Putin uh, to death. Whether you like Vladimir Putin or don't like Vladimir Putin is not really relevant. The point of the matter with, is that if you're a presidential candidate, and your son has already machine gunned. It's one thing that Biden's, you know, funding a war against the, Russia, you know, but this is visceral. His son machine gunned Russian soldiers, legit legal Russian soldiers defending uh, Russia uh, at the behest of their elected leader uh, to death with a machine gun. This is uh, what he bragged about. And this is what RFK bragged about. Uh, so his foreign policy might be a little bit compromised coming out of the gate. I just wanted to put that out there. Yeah, and then uh, Putin will say, "And uh, can we talk about your campaign manager?" <laughs> well, that's a separate that's a separate issue. I don't, it, it, it may not matter, but machine gunning Russian coming over and machine gunning actual Russian citizens to death uh, might be something Putin is not willing to let go of. Machine gun Kennedy. Machine gun Kennedy. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyway, so here's my scenario as it stands right now. Here's what I'm predicting uh, based on what we have today. This is my prediction. Um, two weeks before the, the – oh, by the way, there's two things I wanted to say. One is uh, DeSantis is going to debate uh, Newsom in a couple of weeks in Georgia with um, – what's-his-face from uh, Fox News. 
um, with the CIA pin on his chest. Um, I keep trying to Hannity is going to be the moderator of a presidential debate. I swear to God, people, between Gavin Newsom and Ron DeSantis. This is going to be held in Georgia. There will not be a live audience. Uh, this will be a Fox special gigantic thing. Newsom versus DeSantis. This is where we're going, people. Uh, so that event is like some sort of, you know, computer fight or something, a boxing match between between uh, Joe Lewis and Michael, uh, uh, Mike Tyson. It's like some fantasy boxing match that they would do on a computer. But nevertheless, it will detract and distract from focus on the Republican nominee, uh, Donald Trump, uh, which is their purpose. Hannity, of course, claiming to be Trump's friend is nothing but his friend. And uh, Trump always has a blind eye to this type of stuff. But here's Hannity again as a CIA uh, pin wearer on his lapel, putting together this event uh, uh, meetup in Georgia uh, so DeSantis can debate uh, uh, Newsom, Gavin Newsom. Okay? So we have a Georgia. distant second going yeah. against a guy who's whoa, 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 whoa. Not, not, a, not a distant second. He's in fourth. The uh, oh, Haley is oh. Haley second. Haley second. He's oh. fourth. Yeah. So who's oh. Vivek? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. shit. I didn't know he slipped behind the No, bed. no, 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 no. He's in fourth, DeSantis. Oh, He's now debating <laughs> the governor of California, who I believe will be the Democratic nominee for the presidency of the United States. Yeah, you were going to break that down. But at least at this moment, yeah. he's not even running to be president of the United States. So wh what a great debate. Just, just uh, why don't we bring out Pat Buchanan and have him debate? Maybe okay. him and Gingrich. Well, here, here's what I think it has happened. I think that uh, Newsom has gone to China. He has kissed the ring of the Chinese uh, uh, premier. Uh, the Chinese premier showed up in San Francisco where the three of them met, according to Biden. Biden endorsed Newsom in front of the Chinese premier and uh, gave him his blessing. So that was a big break, a big story, not covered by the mainstream media. It was covered very, very little. Uh, but he endorsed Gavin Newsom as the next president of the United States. You go, what? That's right. So here's my prediction. I believe that two weeks before the convention this summer, the Democratic National Convention, uh, Biden will cite ill health and he will step down after having gone through the primary cycle. Whatever his position is in the primaries, uh, he will not campaign or campaign very little. Uh, whatever happens in the primaries is not going to be relevant. Re relevant. Two weeks before the convention, he will step down, not from the presidency. That's not going to happen until January 20th, 2024. He's going to step down like LBJ did in March of 1968, saying, I will not seek, nor will I allow nomination for the presidency of the United States from my party. That's what Biden's going to do. He's going to do complete LBJ. And it'll take a couple of weeks or a week or three. I'm not sure exactly of the timeline. It depends on how much heat they want to take from the media or how much uh, 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 in-depth study they want of this. So it, it can't be a week. A week is too short, maybe two weeks, maybe three weeks before the convention. Now, in the convention, Newsom will be up there on the stage. Harris will be up on the stage. Biden will say, I endorse Newsom. There are superdelegates involved. There will be votes. It will be legit. It will be legal, and Newsom will come out of that convention as the Democratic nominee for the presidency of the United States. He will then run against Donald Trump, which is a far more formidable opponent than Trump v. Biden. Biden will remain as president until till January 20th, 2024. Uh, so whoever wins either way, that's going to be the end of his presidency. He will govern uh, through the summer and through the winter and into you know January 2024. They will use the power of the White House uh, for any evil doings they can do on behalf of Newsom. But I am predicting that Newsom comes out of that convention in the summer of 2024 coming up as the nominee. Harris will get delegates. Harris will get votes. They will be far short of Newsom. Uh, it'll be a tough break. She will remain on as vice president, uh, as on the same ticket to appease the black women that are the base of the Democratic Party. She will not be jettisoned. She will remain as Newsom's vice president. Whatever political differences they have are meaningless. They're both California liberal Democrats. That will be the ticket out of California. Uh, he has a huge war chest. 
much of it coming from Getty, which is why I wanted to mention Eileen Getty. The Newsom war chest comes from the Getty family that are his allies. It's J. Paul Getty money that backs Newsom. Political is, is Pelosi uh, and her war chest. But the real war chest for Newsom comes out of Getty. And he's already got the blessings of the Chinese premier. He's already got the blessings of, of, of uh, Joe Biden. And I believe they have realized, and that's why uh, George Axelrod is out there every day banging the drum for the Obama camp, saying that Biden can no longer continue to be the Democratic nominee of the party. Axelrod has said this repeatedly on every single platform he can get onto. He is the spokesperson for Barack Hussein Obama. And don't forget the middle name Hussein. Uh, he has gone on multiple channels saying Biden is too old to run. They are going to do this um, with him uh, and, and Biden will step down, I believe, for health reasons, for the good of the country. They'll give him a great send off. He'll get the whole, you know, velvet glove treatment and remain on and remain on. He, he's just going to say, I, I, which is what happened with LBJ. He's going to remain on saying, you know, I could still function today. I'm fine. But in years ahead, I don't think I can continue. And he will stay on until January 2024. Nice. <clears throat> um, people are throwing out the question. I, I have to double check the 12th Amendment and look deeper into it about whether the president and vice president can be from the same state. Because from my um, understanding, it can LB happen. Yeah, I mean, you could just, I mean, the law could be changed in one. That's what LBJ did when he was a senator and vice president. They had a law in Texas, so we had it changed in five minutes. But this is an amendment. It's hard to just change it, um, an amendment to the Constitution in okay. five minutes. So that could be a problem. Okay, with, then, uh, she's gotta go. she's then she's got to yeah. go. But yeah. I think if she can, they will keep, that's really nothing about Kamala Harris, but um, they will attempt to keep her on. If not, he'll pick somebody else who, who won't uh, over, overshine him. I think they will attempt to keep Kamala Harris. Uh, but if they can't legally, this may be correct. I don't know. I mean, then she if they can't, that's good news for Trump because it's going to piss off black females big time. The, well, they'll replace her with a black person. That's you can't replace a black person with a white person. So it'll be another black candidate, um, somebody out of the uh, wide urban landscape of black women uh, politicians. She will not be replaced by a white person. No, yeah, well, <laughs> these are these are just my predictions now. Sure. Based on what I know now, so and it could they, change in a month as things. Move I, I, I'm and just basing know. it now as the landscape. Here's how it looks to me: what I'm feeling, hearing, and seeing from sources and interpretations. You know, based on me. I mean, and I, mm -hmm. I have a certain track record of um, doing this. You know, I've been wrong. I've been right. I mean, it's a mixed bag, but this mm -hmm. is how I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, the overall direction is usually correct. Uh, let me see. You got some love here. Wellesley, to show some love, I really appreciate Mark's frankness. You and Hubley's, I'm guessing he means Hunley, friend, good logic, are to the point. That's our okay. friend, Joe the Jew from well, Jersey. Just don't say Joe the Jew. <laughs> he doesn't care. <laughs> them. Uh, Pasha Maher is an ill-informed, misinformed misnomer or misinformer. Often, Man, I, yes. I didn't know it was that bad. I didn't know it was that bad. It, it only it comes up at different points. Sometimes he's fun to listen to when he's fine, and then other yeah. times it's like, oh my god. Uh, Dick Dickerson seems like Mara is getting paid or blackmailed to be a, the useful idiot. I also wonder if Mara is on the island list. No, I, I think he's just a contrarian. He 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 is what we call in New York, and my friends in New York know this. He's a Jersey asshole. He's always been a Jersey asshole. It's a type of thing. Uh, then people in New York know what I'm talking about. There's a thing called the Jersey asshole, and that's what Mar is. It's hard to shake, very hard to shake. No, what's worse, a Jersey asshole or a mass hole? I, I've never heard the word mass hole, so I don't know. Oh, but, people from uh, Boston and Massachusetts are nicknamed mass holes for... Uh, nobody very... can touch the Jersey asshole, I can guarantee you, and I know plenty of Boston people. Nobody can touch the Jersey asshole. It's legendary. I didn't make it up goes back decades, and uh, it's, they're a thing unto themselves. It's a co an incredible combination of <laughs> arrogance and ignorance uh, combined together. It's a strange witch's brew of arrogance and ignorance. 
All right. Uh, let me see. Mo Bishop, Washa, or Sasha, I guess, Baron Cohen spoke out about Hamas and the murders. Oh, so I guess he did. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen it. What, denouncing okay. them or spoke out saying he loves them? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, okay. he said murder, so I'm going to guess he probably wasn't in favor. Stop saying murder. <laughs> <laughs> it's the S word. Uh, my mother used to say possession is nine-tenths of the law. Anything in the cloud isn't in your possession. Right. At some point, everything will be subject to search and storage yeah, drives no, which needs to be made. Okay. I no, agree. No, I agree. No. I agree. You That's gotta get it. You gotta movies. get it in hand, bro. You gotta get it in hand. Uh, David Smith, Russia, Rush Limbaugh. Sorry, back in the nineties, called environmentalists watermelons, green on the outside and red on the inside. That's Ooh, pretty like good, that. but it's not going to help us when they're, you know, name naming them is not really. They don't care. I mean, they just somehow they have to be stopped. True, but first step is you have to name and label. And okay, say, so okay, there's one, label. there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. So you've got to at the, least know. The, the intro said back in the 90s in that mm -hmm. little comment. So we're, we're, we're now 35 years later. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they, they think long term. I mean, that's a typical. No, no, but I'm saying our okay. response, is, there's been no response from the other side, our side, for 35 years. No, yeah, I mean. Uh, Jenny's getting inky with uh, inky with it. The gender stuff is heavily promoted by socialists too. It's part of abolishing the family because they think it upholds capitalism. Yeah? yeah, that's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I, they they would admit that. Uh, let me see. I think. Do you think Newsom's ex-wife, aka Don Jr.'s current wife, will play a role in this? Do you think she could convince Gavin to stay off the field or no? No, no. 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 You talking about Guilfoyle? Yeah, it's one of the so. strangest stories in political history. The fact that uh, Guilfoyle was the the wife of Gavin Newsom and is now the pre-wife to uh, Donald Trump Jr. I don't know pre-wife, maybe fiance. I don't know what the legal status is of the two, but it is bizarre. It is totally bizarre. I yeah, wouldn't I, trust her as far as I could see her. But they run in the same circle, so it's kind of like it's kind of like a small town in some ways, where I don't think it's as surprising with the you know. The backgrounds. Okay, what if Trump's wife uh, married Joe Biden? That would be very interesting, but you know, <laughs> okay. they run in the same circles. I but mean. they do, and but it happens. I mean, you know, Arianna Huffington was married to uh, uh, a conservative Republican, and that she went completely left. It's there. Well, I mean, keep in mind he was gay, so I mean, she, she okay, so a beard. Out. All right. Well, yeah, it was a beard. Yeah. All right, Mr. Mike's saying that he's been telling Barnes for a year. Newsom and oh, Abrams. it could be Abrams. It could, I, I, it could be Abrams. Absolutely. absolutely, she's loved by the left. So yeah, it could be her. Yeah, absolutely true. Thank you. I mean, she's still claiming to win Georgia, but it has right? to be a black woman. That you can't. T it, it, it just has to be a black woman. There's no wiggle room there. All right, so let me see. You sent this story earlier about New York. What is going on in New York? So, dude, it's, you know, obviously I'm from New York, so I, if people aren't from there, please, you know, give me some Fuck wiggle room here. Are... Yeah, no, I get it. Uh, yeah. This is about the blacks. With not enough food to go around. Why do we have to take the butt of everything? Okay, this community here is already suffering. The residents living in NYCHA's Queensbridge houses look forward to the mobile food pantries that show up weekly. But over the past year, they have witnessed 8,000 migrants move into their neighborhood, and they've also noticed the migrants are also starting to take their stuff. They was first online for the turkeys this morning. If they tell you to be there at 11 o'clock, you get there like 10.30, 10.45, but they already out there. The line is from over there to over here. Free food giveaways, especially during the holidays, have become a source of tension between longtime New Yorkers struggling to get by and newly arrived migrants who are using the system to survive. A month ago, one altercation got so heated between a resident and a migrant, someone ended up... So it's starting to pull yeah, from it's start, Right, right. It's, uh, I mean, there's a $2.5 billion uh, cut coming to the NYPD again uh, next month by uh, the mayor of New York City, who now is being woken up by uh, by rational accountants in the New York City government, uh, showing him that there's a $15 billion or $12 billion shortfall. Uh, this has become a beam, you know, in Gerald Ford, where he told the city to drop dead. Biden is not going to tell him to drop dead. He was, go he was going to give them money. Uh, but this has become uh, a dog-eat-dog -dog, uh, 
uh, situation. And I don't mean they're eating dogs, but they may be eating dogs pretty soon because these migrants are running loose to the city. They're untethered. They have no cultural connection to the city. They're mostly from Africa. Uh, they're mostly male, uh, military age, as RFK Jr. pointed out, 18 to 25. They're committing crimes. Uh, they don't have jobs and uh, they don't even have food. So they're lining up for that type of food where there's a food bank. Uh, they've already cleaned out every church food bank in the city uh, that's, you know, uh, helping the, the people, not who are homeless, but there's food banks that have been overwhelmed for three years since this mutt became president and the food prices went through the roof uh, that have been living off of church uh, and school food banks. Those have been cleaned out by the migrants now. Uh, so this is becoming a very serious problem among people in New York City. Yeah, and they actually are registered about something. You know, hopefully they take action because that's the frustrating thing. Is uh, same thing as the woke stuff, like the women who said, "You know what? Screw this! I'm going to leave that event if we're going to be trans athletes." Here, I hope that she votes, you know, for her needs. Right. Same way that Giuliani won way back in the '90s. Yeah, so I mean, occasionally he, happens. Yeah. Even what's his face? Uh, Bloomberg was a Republican too, Eric. I mean, there's been a long list of Republican mayors in New York City. It's far from not being impossible. I mean, uh, didn't the, wasn't there a mayoral victory the other day in uh, Charlotte, uh, South Carolina? For, oh, that one's big, though. That was the first Republican yeah. since 1896 or so. I mean, some ridiculous yeah. number. I mean, uh, the, the, the last like Republican was someone who knew Lincoln personally or something right. like that. So there's, that that's look, huge. There, you could feel the changes in the air. I mean, this Bill Maher, Bill Maher, this uh, um, Tucker thing in Va Las Vegas. If anybody can see a copy of his speech in Las Vegas, uh, absolutely marvelous. You know, talking about how everybody's on pins and needles. This is in the air. This is not your imagination. This is getting crazy. Gun sales are the highest ever in the history of the United States. Uh, uh, something's going to give. Something's going to get when you have this much tension in a country this size, uh, shit's going to happen. And we're seeing a silent majority, uh, to use the phrase from the 70s, come and mm -hmm. waking, waking up uh, to something. I mean, there's a former founder of BLM who's endorsed Donald Trump now. You want to talk about strange bedfellows? Uh, oh, rap concerts. I mean, rap artist after rap artist after rap artist are saying, you know, go Trump. We want Trump. We want Trump. I mean, in, in concerts. You know, people you would never, ever necessarily expect. Well, I think that seeing Trump in court and the threat of jail reminds them of their own uh, environment. I mean, it reminds them of how they roll, how, you know, how they have friends in jail, how they've been through the court system. I mean, nobody knows more about the legal system than these people. I'll tell you that right now. They know every single law in the books. Uh, and they, they commiserate with Trump going through this and Trump saying this is a corrupt system. And Trump's right, and they're right, and there's a meeting of the minds right there, a cultural meeting of the minds. Well, I do have some hope because in 2016, we had Brexit that happened, and that was a precursor to Trump winning and shocking the world. Well, we just had Argentina with the first libertarian elected. What about the Dutch Trump? Mm -hmm. How about that? Did you see that guy? I haven't, no. No, no, there's a Dutch Trump. I mean, they're, they're the. I love how they, they put the moniker and then Trump. You know what I mean? There's sure. a Trump from Saturn. The Platter in Saturn has a Trump. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's the Finland Trump. There's the Australian Trump. Which one do you got? I don't know. I got the one. I got the, the, the Portuguese Trump. You know, there's all these uh, shorthand uh, names of these populist candidates is what they're referring to who are Trump-like. You know, uh, but they said that about uh, – jerk off in England during Brexit. Uh, uh, Boris they, Johnson, well, that kind of rolled, yeah. Yeah, he was uh, the, the British Trump, if I remember uh, my British friends telling me about uh, sure uh, this douche who uh, flipped and partied during uh, the COVID thing and just kept partying until he was removed from office, you know. Yep, and uh, was tied in with uh, Ukraine and did some shenanigans. Over Do you remember when, when Oliver Stone was explaining the Nazis in Kiev and how Ukraine? Oh, was Bill's like, oh, what are you talking about? I mean, it's like Bill never read a newspaper and uh, I haven't seen it's anything. A, what? It's a, wow, wow. Just yeah, he he. Anyway, it's just. You I think that's it. why Oliver Stone was so polite because I think he was shocked. Yeah, for the time. 
Well, he also didn't have the energy to explain the history of the world to him in five. And know, he was past, stoned. And he was stoned too. I mean, <laughs> but he, he smokes he smokes all the time. Right. All right. So let me see. We have um here the Democrats are uh trying to hold positions here. What in the hell is this all about, Mark? Okay, so uh, somebody, some, and I don't know who it is, offered this uh, Democratic candidate who is running um, against Talib up in Michigan uh, $20 million to drop his candidacy um, and run, and to not run against the controversial uh, uh, House Rep to, uh, Rashida Talib. Uh, I don't know what this is about. I mean, this is the strangest story i've seen in a while if it has any truth to it it is a shocking shocking it doesn't story. make sense to me because i mean 20 million dollars for a congressperson seat a senator i could almost see because i mean that that's a bit more juice especially when it's tight but congressperson i don't know she's got a big voice a big platform she's a, she jew, a jew hater she's the palestinian Hamas spokesperson who's now infiltrated the United States government. I mean, imagine if you had a Nazi spokesperson in 1936 mm. within the United States Senate or Congress as a German-American uh, Bund uh, candidate out of the Upper East Side of New York or New Jersey, where they had a big German-American uh, population that supported Hitler. Uh, they very easily could have elected somebody out of New Jersey, the T Rashida Tlaib version of an American Nazi, uh, not as far-fetched. I don't think they would have tolerated back then what they do now. Uh, there were a lot of German American immigrants out of that region in New Jersey by the GW Bridge or wherever the hell they were. Um, I think it's around there. And also out on Long Island and some other places, the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Uh, but they, they, the closest thing I saw was, I think out of South Dakota, there was a German American senator uh, who used his power in Operation Paperclip, the episode we did, we talked about him helping to bring Nazis into the United States after the war. You'd have to go back and look at that episode to see what I'm talking about, that we have Operation Paperclip, two episodes. That's about the closest thing I could imagine to Tlaib, who is clearly uh, has Hamas infiltration in her, in her campaign. Hamas infiltration among the voters, Hamas money flowing in there. Uh, she's fighting off censorship uh, uh, on the left and the right. Uh, so I don't know. I've never seen anything quite like this, having someone uh, that uh, positioned from another country um, or supporting another country's politics uh, within the United States House of, House of Representatives. Hmm. All right. So... Um I've been seeing a lot flying by, and then you put up articles here. Um, what's going on in Ireland? Okay, so the Ireland situation was a kid was stabbed by an illegal alien in Ireland, and a kid was killed, and there's been a rise of crime. And finally, the Irish got their dander up and uh, decided to take it to the streets, and they've had it. Uh, they are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with these illegal aliens, uh, McGregor came out today. There's some video footage of it. They, uh, yeah, so McGregor, uh, the, uh, the fighter, came out supporting the uh, protesters. Uh, they were smeared as right-wing protesters. They're far from that. They're just regular Irish people who are fed up uh, with illegal immigration. You are going to begin to see this around the world. Uh, the people are fed up. These elites who run their governments have decided to destroy their own countries by uh, eliminating them as, a, as, a, as an ethnic group within their own nations. They want a one world, uh, we are the world uh, situation. And uh, the Irish, are, as far as I can tell, are the first uh, country to take it to the streets. And I'm really proud of them for doing that, being half Irish myself. Uh, a lot of them have just had it, and, and I don't blame them. I mean, this thing, the stabbing of these children, uh, the crime that they're perpetuating, these illegal aliens and, and, and people that are brought into Ireland and into New York and into L.A. and into everywhere else, crime after crime after crime after crime. Finally, the Irish said, fuck it, and uh, uh, thank God for the Irish. 
and decided to take it to the streets and, and, and express their frustrations uh, with their own government, uh, allowing this to continue. Uh, we have an open border here. This situation that happened up in Niagara Falls uh, turned out to be some co some couple that was going to a Kiss concert and decided to put the metal to the uh, the pedal to the metal on their car that went airborne through the border uh, uh, toll booths, uh, causing an explosion. But everybody presumed at the time that it was a terrorist attack. That's Never because uh, explosions in the air with cars are yeah. very rare. Right. Um, it, it, Mythbusters even did like a whole thing on that, how cars only blow up in Hollywood. or I mean, they sometimes do, but it's very, very rare for them to do that. Right. So the point I'm trying to make is they closed the entire border within five minutes in, up in Canada. You can't, you can, but you, could, you can't do that with the southern border. You can't physically close it unless you have a wall with toll booths like they have up in Canada. Uh, and the southern border, obviously, is just wide open now. Everybody's coming in. Everybody's bringing their mother and bicycles and whatever they got going right into the right into the United States. No country has this, folks. There is no country that has an open border like this. Uh, e the EU has open borders because they're one entity. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but even Hungary and Poland and these other countries have physical structures as borders. The only reason we have a border up north is because of Canada that insists on being a normal sovereign country with a border. So the car that went airborne uh, slammed into one of the stanchions and exploded, according to them. You know, I'll see, I'll believe it when I see it. But what I'm saying is they closed the border immediately. And you can't do that in the southern border unless you have um, physical barriers, uh, which a former president tried to build. You know, um, looking at this, this is Dublin, Ireland. So that's mm -hmm. Ireland proper. Mm -hmm. Brexit technically was about immigration yeah on the down low yeah but ireland chose not to do the same thing so they, ireland but the, the, elite, the elites the elites of ireland chose not to do the well, same right thing. right right but i'm just saying so the yeah. people may be yeah. looking and saying hey wait a minute maybe we should have done brexit as well because a lot of brexit was just hey we want to control our border Mm -hmm. You're saying that it's open borders, period, EU open, and we have to take everything coming in. So I just mm -hmm. think it's an interesting situation that the one country who didn't, the people are saying, oh, you know, F this. And I wonder yeah. if that's going to be yeah. revisited. Because remember, everything is going to blow up, right? England was going to go completely bankrupt. Everybody be dead because of oh, Brexit. Right, right, but they right. seem to survive somehow. Well, I... I... I'm, I'm with the Irish. Let me just put it that way. I'm with McGregor, who's Scottish, I think. I don't think McGregor's even Irish. He's Irish. But oh, he's McGregor is like a Scottish name. Con is he? Uh, Connor McGregor's Irish. Okay. All right. So yeah. I'm with McGregor and I'm with my uh, Irish cousins. Yeah, he, he, he's definitely. As a matter of fact, he's so Irish. Every time he would fight, it was like the country moved into the uh, stadium. He, he's really popular. In that. Okay. I'm with him. Uh, let me get some love here. Andrew Ho from Australia. Hello, tomorrow. Which Supreme Court justice will get rid of uh, will get rid of to place Harris there? I can't quite understand that. When she kicks up stink to replace her with Newsom as VP, when they put Michelle Obama to replace Joe for 2024. I don't think Michelle I, I don't Obama believe really any, wants I don't believe to believe any of that's going to happen. <laughs> so I, I can't answer the question because I don't think any of that's going to happen. And, and honestly, that's gone come up a lot. I really don't think Michelle Obama wants to run for president. Uh, People Gavin, want her to, but I don't think she wants it. I predict that Harris will go back and become governor of, New York, of uh, California. Or they'll try to find her a Supreme Court slot. That's one way to get rid of her. Never going to happen. There's no slot. Uh, Basil Beshkov, $50. Thank you, sir. If Trump wins in 2024, do you believe it possible the U.S. military will pull a real January 6th? Yeah, That's I mean, look, happens. anything's possible because they, everything they projected onto Trump is stuff that they kicked around themselves at their cocktail party. So, you know, I wouldn't put it past them in a second, you know, that they would, that they would um, uh, do something. Absolutely. Uh, did you know we have 4,000 people watching here on YouTube? I hope you guys are I gotta, getting I got to get, get a pair of pants. You know, somebody <laughs> should say... Yeah, look at this. I got Hanley to laugh. It's not so easy. It happens. It happens. Occasionally. You know what's so funny about the show? 
I'm, I'm talking to Hunley off the show and then the show just starts like, but it's the same thing we're talking about before the yeah. show. Like we don't even know we're not, we're just talking. And then he goes, Oh, we got to go live, but we're just talking normally anyway. And then it becomes the show, which is really surreal, but it yeah, doesn't but mean cool. I have to wear pants. You know, it's nice if you would subscribe. It's nice if they would hit the like button. It's nice if they would help me with the uh, JFK book fund because the books I'm getting are great. Uh, through PayPal and Venmo, and I really appreciate it. And I'll read the names of the people who've donated uh, later in the later in the month. But um, the stuff that we put up the other day on uh, Oswald is I, I heard it for the first time with the people listening, Eric, at live, Eric. You know, what I mean, mm. I, I didn't preview it because it went up so late. Mm. We were still putting it up on Dr. Drew and Rich Barris's locals and Viva's locals. Hell, it's still being worked now, this minute. <laughs> no, no, but I'm saying I never had a chance to listen to it in its entirety. Mm. So I did it with everyone else, and I got caught up in it, as did Rich Barris, who told me he had to go shopping, but he couldn't leave the room to find out what happened. Uh, <laughs> Viva gave one of the craziest uh, plugs for it I've ever seen on video, which is highly funny. And uh, uh, Drew put it up also on his local. So we're trying to expand the locals community through these art projects. And this is an art project of mine that I Basil's created. Basil's got your back. Uh, to buy <laughs> <laughs> I have pants. They're just not on me right now. I don't need more pants, Basil. But uh, thank you. And, and, and this is a project that, that I had, as I said to Eric at the beginning, I had been offered. Uh, this project with Macmillan Books, uh, this audio, audio book, uh, scripted, not so much as an audio book like you'd read an audio book, but with actors reading parts. And I and I said to myself, there's 289 parts in this thing. How, and, and they said to me, um, I never forgot this, the actors can do multiple voices. And I'm thinking to myself, Eric, I'm thinking to myself, how many voices can an actor do? I mean, I, I do voices once in a blue moon. I, maybe I could do five good ones or ten good yeah, ones. Yeah. Some good can. Uh, Jim, what, Dale. Uh, Jim Dale, I think, was credited with um, almost a thousand voices. He did the Harry Okay, Potter well, this series. is not Jim it's Dale. Very this, is rare. A, this is a bunch of Broadway voiceover sure. actors. And I just started to get queasy about the deal with Macmillan Books, which is not AI like Eric is doing, you know, with this stuff and with James, but it was more, uh, you know, actors in a studio reading, which was the original idea. The AI is so frightening of me listening to me. I can't. That's my favorite part. No, no, it's insane. I mean, I'm listening with some friends and they're going, is that you? I go, no, it's not me. I never read this thing in my life out loud. Uh, it was just really fascinating to hear me do that. You could get it on locals if you join locals. Uh, I think for the year you get this as a gift, you know. Speaking of generosity and people sending things in, uh, we even get things in our PO box. Like uh, we, what is I mean, that? everybody else has a three ninety nine. We have our own. That just oh, came a magic bullet three ninety nine. Wow, yep. that's cool. And miraculously, there's two of them, so we can both find them in a limo. That's uh, funny. Sent in by David Meyer. And, okay, Meyer. Uh, wow. He um, also sent in the past some uh, Jack Ruby carousel club business cards it oh. kind of makes up these uh historical oh, oh, um, reproductions gotcha. which is gotcha. kind of cool it's really cool though so you well know. nothing will top this thing that the guy gave us uh last oh yeah week. i oh, mean yeah. that this, this thing this thing is just unbelievable you know yeah, that was that was a fantastic fantastic thing there's ads for minox cameras in there by the way at nordstrom's just oh, they did have the. Yeah, I yeah. was trying to find that damn ad because yeah, 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 it, yeah, it yeah. showed you know, how much money they were and how the hell did Oswald pay for that with you know right. no they were money? Like Eighty nine dollars times. That's seven. a month. That's yeah. like two months' salary back then. Well, when you depending working, working as a dangle, they give you one for free. Yep, exactly. I mean, Michael Payne had one. He got a. He might have paid for his. Michael Payne. Who knows. Sure. All right. My, um, I'm not your buddy guy. And folks, thank you very much. I mean, Super Chess do help when we're demonetized. Hopefully we win. Um, I worry that they will JFK Trump because of what he'll do. Very possible. I don't know. I asked um, Barris, by the way, to give us some numbers on Newsom versus Trump, mm. uh, the theoretical matchup. So hopefully I bet it's closer something. than Biden. Uh, no, 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 no. It may be a lot closer than anybody thinks, bro. <laughs> oh, I'll it, tell it you right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they're going for. You're hearing it here first. They're going for Newsom versus Trump. Wrap your minds around it. That's where this is going, people. 
Well, because there's nobody else on the bench. They already killed Cuomo. Yeah, that's why he's out. Yeah. almost taken out for this reason. And Newsom is the guy, because Cuomo would have done it too. Uh, Newsom, oh, yeah, is yeah. The guy, Newsom is the guy. He's been endorsed by Biden. Uh, he's going to debate DeSantis. He's going to probably destroy DeSantis because he's very good at debating Newsom. And that'll be on Fox and I'll give him uh, high visibility. Yeah, I noticed that he picks uh, DeSantis. I wonder how he would do with uh, Vivek. It goes both ways. DeSantis wanted to do it with him, too. I'm sure. Yeah. It's it's just weird. Uh, Gary Bostic, great job, guys, in Dallas. We'll make Mark a Texan yet. Jedberg Club. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, he might. I mean, Mark probably wouldn't mind. but <laughs> No, I wouldn't mind. Uh, John S., thanks for bringing up what happened in Dublin. The BBC and other MSM News are describing the riots is from the far right well yeah of course but these are just pissed off native irish shocked that 20 percent of their population are now non-irish born. it's not that they're killing people they stabbed babies to death for christ's sakes this is not just people coming you know okay normally legally in the united states normally legally united states roughly two million people a year legally become american citizens by the book okay nobody begrudges the two million no they're people, welcome well, you're because they, yeah. but they've been on a waiting list. They've paid for the application. They filled out the forms. They've taken the test. It's about illegal aliens. What the fuck is so hard for people to understand? The difference between them is enormous. One group, and I and I said I've said this to people for years here in L.A. What about the grandfather in Seoul, South Korea, who's been waiting to move to L.A. to see his grandchild since the day she was born? Yep. In, in, in Koreatown in Los Angeles, who's been waiting, who's done this by the book, who's waiting to come here. The grandchild is now nine years old, nine years old. He's still not legally coming to L.A., uh, doing it by the book. And people are coming and going through that southern border mm-hmm. and returning for Christmas to bring Christmas presents. This poor schmuck in Seoul can't get in to see his grandchild. I mean, explain yep. it to him why he has to live and act this way while another group is allowed to come and go as they please. Uh, please, somebody explain it to him. Forget about right-wing Trump supporters. No, Forget no, no. about uh, uh, all this uh, you know, ridiculing of whatever you want to do about Trump. Explain it to the Korean in Seoul whose family has lived in L.A. for generations without him because he was there, who can't get here because he's doing it by the book. Well, I, I'm from Tucson, dude, and I can tell you that the people who hated illegals more than anyone were Mexican Americans who mm-hmm. were uh, either first generation and had gone through the process, or were second generation, you know, born to first generation who had gone through the process. They right. could not stand. No, no, I agree. Illegals. I, I agree. I just want to take it out of this Mexican debate because it's always about Mexicans. There mm-hmm. are other nationalities sure. in the world who are trying to come here by the book. And these Mm -hmm. other nationalities are never heard by the American media. I suggest that someone interview someone in in Korea or somewhere else who's been on a waiting. All over, yeah. I don't know about Haiti, but (laughs) there are. Yeah. Excuse me? A lot of Caribbean are applying and they go through the same. No, no, no. But I'm I'm talking about places, you know, like far away, like Australia, normal people where they come from. I've had friends here in town because of the movie business come Mm -hmm. here on work visas and have to go back. You know, who who do it by the book and realize my work visa has run out. I have to return to Australia, Eric. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 17 hour flight as opposed to a 17 minute drive across the border. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's mind boggling. We got a rumble rant from Freddie 65 saying that Prime took down Oliver Stone's Ukraine on fire as soon as the war started. Fortunately, I was able to see it on Rumble. I had no idea of this history. Yeah, the Bandera history, the worship of the Nazis by the Ukrainians, uh, the worship of Bandera, uh, who was the leader of the Ukrainian Nazis, killing Jews and also Poles. Uh, yeah, they don't want. They didn't want you to see that. Mm-hmm. Got to get it on DVD, my friends. Yep, or Blu-ray for those who, you know, are are upscale. Uh, Pamela Clifton, hi guys, hi Pamela. Oh, Pamela got to see Bobby Kennedy. He got. Oh, is that a picture of her with him? Yeah, 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 yeah. She, she's pinged me on Twitter before. I knew it. she's a big Bobby Kennedy fan. Oh wow. Uh, Mo Bishop, the Groden presentation tune in Allen, Texas, was great. 
I yeah, seen he, he kind of goes insane saying there's a bullet in the back of the head. I don't know what he's talking about with the bullet in the back of the head. And then he's got the McCone Rowley document, or Rowley McCone document that he puts up on the screen that has been debunked uh, 20 years ago. He still believes that that is legit. I don't know why. Uh, he's got his forensics all over the map, Groden. Uh, sometimes you have to stick to thine last, uh, which for him is analysis of the Zapruder film and other films. When he starts to get into forensics and documents, uh, that is not his ballywick. And I was shocked to see uh, how wrong he was on some other issues regarding the assassination uh, in that performance. Hmm. Um, BTK gave $2. Socks for winter. Is that per sock or a dollar a sock? Is that where? Well, you go to Dollar oh. Tree, you could get all kinds of stuff at Dollar Tree. That's true. That's true. It's not, and it's not a Dollar Tree. It's Dollar Tree. True. Mark, have you seen Albert Brooks' new HBO show with Meathead? I, I don't know what that is. What is it? Talk show? I don't know, and I didn't know. Albert, Albert Brooks Brooks. has become a great actor. I mean, so um, AKA Albert Einstein, by the way. Yep, and his brother, Super Dave Osborne. It's Ooh, Dave Einstein. Right. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I don't know. That that would suck being born Albert Einstein, though. It'd be kind of like, don't you have a middle name? <laughs> what, what are you doing? All right. So good time for everybody to head over to Locals. So we've got Pina Show sliding in. Hi, Mark and Eric. Been deal busy dealing with the chaotic world. Haven't been able to watch regularly. Is it me or do the 60s seem muted by media? Well, I, I, I said on Twitter, the ABC World News coverage was 60 seconds long. I timed it. Uh, it was 60 seconds long, 60 seconds. I, I don't even know what, what you can say in 60 seconds. There's no news story I've ever seen, unless there's a news story that's 30 seconds. Uh, this coverage was 60 seconds. Uh, ABC World News on November 22nd. So think about that, folks. Definitely. And I want to talk on here before we head over to locals, because we're going to be heading over to locals for the after party, hang out, answer locals questions that have come through there. We're putting a lot of work into locals with the whole scripted audio drama of Oswald that's rolling out there. We have more coming out, though, too, like those who want to see our presentation from um, Texas and Dallas that Mark and I did that film at we recorded it ourselves. We're going to be putting that on locals. Mark also appeared at the city of Allen TV, and that has not shown up as a video. I'm not sure when or if that's showing up, but we will be getting a version of it, a complete version with all the questions, because even what was seen was truncated, I think, at a couple hours, and it went yeah. almost like two and a half hours. Well, that he says, will be George on says two hours, so I, I believe it's two hours. Okay, well, that's going to also be on locals in the next couple of days. Let me tell you and, something. That was a, and I hate to toot my own horn, but that was a pretty good show by me down in Allen, Texas. So go on. I'm sorry. That, I, I felt comfortable doing that. You know, it had a big screen, great tech booth. It was like a good one man show. Yeah, and uh, a lot of Q and A for people. Yeah, Q and A. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a good show. Uh, and also. You may want to consider joining Locals now. Again, you can be a Locals member for free. You're not going to get all the goodies like the Oswald, you know, where we get the script and the audio drama. But there's a lot of content that's on there. You could even be watching this. You can watch this and hang out for the after party. You don't have to be a paying member. You're just not able to, you know, do comments or things. Mark's going through every drink right now. Yeah, no, I'm but, throwing them away. I got some empty ones. I, I, I'm like, if this is beer, you'd be like chucking it behind you. Yeah, you know, peanuts trying... on the floor. What, I mean, what, what the hell's going on there? I don't know. A lot of different <laughs> drinks. I have a cold, so I'm trying to stay hydrated. Nobody drinks more than Mark. I have a condition, Hunley. Would you stop the vasovagal syncope? And Google that shit. Uh, yeah, I'll get back to you. Uh, I do. I really do have this condition, though. I have to. <laughs> right. Um, I'm your buddy guy. He says, have a great evening. But anyway, back to Locals. If you want to join it now, because we're putting more in there, Locals membership's going to go up to $70 a year. Mm -hmm. So you can join. It, it's for cheaper the, than Barnes's thing, I'll tell you that much. Oh yeah, that's what Sport Picks is like. Oh my God, and I think their their locals may be going up uh, even more, but not to not to that degree. Yeah. But anyway, 
No, uh, December 1st, our locals will be going up to $70, but I wanted to give everybody a chance and have, you know, some real time in there where you can still subscribe for $50 a year. We're doing only annual memberships anymore. And again, it's free to be a member. If you want to support us, it's 50 bucks a year and you're going to get a lot of content. I mean, 10 hours of Oswald as it's rolling out, and you're helping us put that together. So please consider joining. There's a link to this episode for the after party in the description, both here and on Rumble, or you can just go right to on structure.locals.com. Again, follow for free. I hope you guys are over there, and we can keep this going now. Thank you.